Today's video is going to be the very first one in the Halloween 2021 series. This month I will be uploading extra, so instead of uploading three days like I typically do, I will be uploading five days a week, ladies and gentlemen, five days a week, which is uh, a lot of work. So I hope you all appreciate it. I love this series so much. I love everything about Halloween. And this video to kick off the whole season is very exciting. It is a skull. It has a little reservoir in the actual skull, like where the brain would be. And I made little tiny bugs that you can stuff up into the skull and then you can pull them out and they come crawling out of the skull. It is super creepy, super Halloween-y. It is just everything I love about Halloween nail art. It's over the top surprising, exactly what I look for when I'm thinking of a Halloween design. So I hope you love it as much as I do. And don't forget to click subscribe to see the rest of this year's Halloween spooky designs as well. Bye. We are going to begin with an overlay of a dark red acrylic, just something kind of spooky, kind of Halloween-y. A black one would also look nice, but just pick something that is somewhat Halloween-like. And I think the dark red really kind of adds a slightly more gory tone to this design. But then we're going to encapsulate with a layer of clear acrylic to make sure it is nice and strong. And then after that layer, then you can go ahead and file this nail into shape with whatever your preferred preference is. I'm going to use my e-file just to make sure everything is smoothed out exactly how I like it. And then once we have that done, we're going to be sculpting a dome inside a mold with a cream color acrylic. And if you want to see how I made this mold, I can put a link to that video in the description box below. It is the Cinderella carriage video so that if you go looking for it, you know which one to click on. Um, but that one definitely will give you all of the ins and outs on making the mold, but then pop the dome out of the mold once it has cured and then use a marker to draw the eye sockets on kind of the lower, one of the lower sides of the of the little dome. So draw your two eye sockets and then after you have them drawn out, that's just to help you a little bit. Take your e-file and a narrow bit and you're going to carve them out. So my recommendation for this is to carve off layer and layer don't try to say poke a hole and then increase the size of the hole because all of a sudden your e-file will like try to go through and go through and go through and then all of a sudden it'll zap down through and you'll end up with a hole that was not very well controlled probably not where you want it and it'll just get out of hand really quickly so just as you can see there just take off a few layers of acrylic from all the way around where you want the eye socket to be and then all of a sudden it'll just work its way through the acrylic and you'll have a very controlled experience carving out those eye sockets so once you have that done you're going to want to glue your little dome top of the skull area onto the nail and you know fit that so that it's it, you leave plenty of space below it for carving in the rest of the skull or sculpting in the rest of the skull because you still have to fit in the entire jaw area so you want to place the this domed part accordingly and then you're going to take more of your cream color and you're going to fill in the gaps around it as you can see it doesn't fit down smoothly to the nail there's definitely some space here and there around it so just take some more of that same color acrylic and fill in all of those all those little gaps so that you know you can't see through it from one side to the other and it fits nice and snug down to the nail one thing to keep in mind when you're doing this especially around the eye sockets as you can see i just took my brush inside the eye socket and pushed the acrylic back out is you don't want to press this acrylic in too far and have it where it fills in your dome and the, the main reason why you don't want to fill in the dome is that you need that space for stuffing it with little creepy crawlies so just make sure that you you leave plenty of space for that so now we're going to be sculpting the rest of the details on our skull with that same color of acrylic and the reason i'm using a cream color instead of white is because really skulls aren't bright white unless they're bleached um, either sun bleached or otherwise they all have a very natural tone to them and live bone that's inside your bodies is not even slightly light colored it's actually fairly dark so depending on you know how old this skull is will depend on what color it is and for me i just thought it looked a little bit more natural being a you know an off-white and not that really bright pristine color that i was tempted to use instead so after I have the upper set of teeth done, I'm going to work on doing the nasal cavity. And as you're sculpting all of these little bits in, you can take the skull as detailed as you want or as simple as you want. And really, you wouldn't have to sculpt in the lower jaw. If you, you know, if you wanted to leave it basically how I have it right now, you certainly could. In fact, again, I was very tempted to do that. I don't often leave the skull just with the upper set of teeth and taking off that lower mandible. But sometimes I like that look. And I usually forget to do it. It's not even that that I don't like it or I don't prefer it. It's just that I don't consider it. So that would also be an option if you wanted to make this design either fit better on a shorter nail, which that would definitely lend itself towards, or if you wanted to just speed up the process, make it easier or quicker on yourself, you could just have left out this part that I'm sculpting currently. 
If you, however, decided to sculpt it, go ahead and do that. Fill it in, add that, add that part of it. You know, add as much detail as you want to. It's that's the great thing about so many of the designs that I do, is they have that range of of how detailed to make it and i really like to try to give options for either making things a little more detailed or a little more simplified so i hope you i hope you can take something away from that if you want to you can always go back to your e-file and carve things out a little differently for me it's the sides of my skull just got a little bit bulky and i don't know if i carved that out now or later but i decided to just take my e-file and just sort of smooth them out yeah right there smooth those out a little bit just to sort of simplify the profile there and if, you know, any point in any of your designs, if you find something that you see and you're like, you know what, that just doesn't look right. Grab your e-file, grab a hand file, take care of it, take it off, redo it. There's no harm in it, no harm, no foul. In fact, it's one of those things that, especially if you're working on a client, maybe this is just me, maybe not, but I find that I'm very prone to trying to cover up mistakes and not that, you know, anything that you do with art is, is a mistake exactly. But you know, if you change your mind on something, I try to cover it up instead of erasing and starting over. And I don't know, it's probably just because when you're working with a client, you want to seem professional and you don't want to seem like you don't have a clue what you're doing, but occasionally that is the case and you are experimenting. And if you are, trust me, your clients are going to love what you do no matter what. So you know, if you have something to file off because it didn't go as planned, file it off. Nobody's gonna, nobody's gonna have a problem with it. In fact, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but if I was working with somebody and they did that, I would appreciate that not only did they take a risk and try something, but that they, uh, you know, they decided it wasn't working out so well and they were willing to admit that, you know, it wasn't the best plan and they started over. So there we go. There's my piece of philosophy for the evening but we're just going to go through and keep adding details to our skull build up around the eye sockets even if you keep it simple which you certainly could as i said one thing i would do is i would just build up the brow bone a little bit i think that just adds so much and it really is a quick easy little bit um it's it's totally up to you though however you want to do it but just having that nice nice little ridge right around the eye socket i think adds a lot i'm gonna build up a little bit more uh, detail to the different plates of the skull on the sides and just kind of keep adding little details. If you're looking for reference photos for skulls, just when you're typing in, if you're Googling a skull, you know, human skulls or whatever it is that you're, you're searching for, look for like right side, left side, or front view. Just get yourself a few different perspectives of it because especially if you're sculpting something as dimensional as this, you're going to have it where you could see it from different angles. So you may wanna have reference photos representing all of those different angles that you're trying to sculpt. So we're going to just keep adding little bits here. One thing that I like to do that sometimes can be helpful when you're sculpting something this detailed is just set it aside for a few minutes, you know, three, three minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes, whatever it is, get, you know, get a snack, go to the bathroom, work on a different project and come back to it. And you'll be amazed at the different things that you see when you step away for a moment and then come back. And it can be something subtle. Like you'd be like, oh, you know what? This side is just a little higher than that side of whatever it is you're sculpting. And you can even it out. You never know what you're going to see. And, you know, probably you'll see nothing. And, you know, you'll just keep working on your project as if you didn't take that that three minute little intermission or maybe you'll see something that will be revolutionary to your design so if you are just not feeling a design for a moment or if you just think there's something a little bit off about it but you can't place your finger on it set it down for a while and if after 10-15 minutes you come back and you still feel that way and you just can't quite figure out what's wrong with it but you can just tell there's something wrong with it leave it for a day because sometimes you just have a night you can't see and maybe after sleeping or you know waiting a while you come back and it'll all make sense to you. I did sculpt his teeth with bright white acrylic just so that they showed up a little bit more bright a little bit brighter and then after I have all that sculpting done I'm going to take a diluted black paint and I'm going to be adding some shading on my skull. So when I'm doing this this paint is so diluted that it's just a wash. It's a very light skin tint and so you're almost using it like it's a watercolor and it's a, not a very pigmented watercolor either. You're just very lightly adding some adding some shading to it and when you're doing that it doesn't have to be smooth. In fact if it looks a little bit almost like the like the water and the paint is beating up then it actually adds some texture and some, you know, some kind of aged look to the skull too. So that's not a bad thing. And I'm going to do the same kind of process, highlighting with some diluted white paint. And I've got a really big, uh, flat, fairly flat brush that I'm doing for this. It's just a, it's an acrylic painting brush, bought it at Michael's. Not a super expensive one, but just, you know, something to do some nice shading. And then using a smaller nail art brush, I'm going to be doing all the finer details with straight black paint. 
So just grab your black paint and start filling in. Depending on how much sculpting you did on your skull, you know, you may really not, you may not have that much fine details, finer details to paint in, or maybe, maybe you'll have more if you left it simple. One thing I do on basically all of my skulls that I've ever done is I like to give them some cracks. I feel like if it's a skull that's a human skull on the side of the road and in this case it's creepy crawly infested, you know it's probably cracked in a few places. So I always like to add a couple cracks here and there and then I'm going to apply a layer of gel sealer over the background and cure it and then finish my skull with some matte top coat and that is regular lacquer matte top coat not gel. Just apply that over the top of Mr. Skull and then you can set this to the side and we're going to make our creepy crawlies. So I'm going to cut nine short pieces of black thread and one long piece and the reason it's nine instead of 12 is because I for whatever reason I made three legged or well six legged spiders and the reason they're spiders is because they have only two body pieces and a spider has two body pieces and four legs and a bug has three body sections and and six legs so did i say four legs i meant eight legs silly me but anywho these are like a non-existent creepy crawly they're part spider part insect and as soon as i got done with it i did one of those you should have had a v8 head slaps because i don't know why i did this it's one of my pet peeves too getting the incorrect insect and spider body body anatomy so anyways fix that if you're going to recreate this design please either make these bugs or make them spiders don't make them some kind of weird hybrid like i did but we're going to lay those pieces the short pieces of thread overlapping each other on a nail form backing and then sculpt the body on top of them this will hold the pieces of thread together so that the legs are embedded in the creepy crawly's body once you have that done, flip them over so that the side that was on the nail form backing is now facing up and place a drop of glue, space these out too so that they're, you know, a certain distance apart and then place a little drop of glue on top of each one. Set down your long piece of black thread on top of them, effectively gluing them to the major piece. After that glue has set up just enough where you're not worried about messing up your acrylic brush by sculpting, um, with acrylic on top of it you're going to secure the wire to each creepy crawly body with some more black acrylic so just sculpt some more black acrylic right over the top of where that thread is after you have that done you can give these guys a leg haircut so basically just trim their legs down so they're all about the same length depending on how long your threads were originally that may be a lot or maybe a little bit just trim them off so they all look pretty nice and even steven and then paint little red eyes on each one of their cute little insect faces once that's done, you can apply some matte top coat over those buggy faces and then take one end of your string and glue it into the skull. So place a drop of nail glue onto the end of the thread and then just string it all the way up in there. Then I would recommend when you go to, after you let that glue dry, once you go to shove your bugs into the skull to use a pointy tweezers like the one I'm using to demonstrate. And then basically all you have to do is freak somebody out by pulling the other end of the thread and you have creepy crawlies climbing out of the skull. It is so creepy. It is so magnificently Halloween. I hope you guys love it as much as I do. I do have some past skull designs and I will put links to all of those in the description box below. And don't forget to click subscribe. I have so much spooky stuff in store for the next month and I can't wait to share it with you guys and I'll see you next time. Bye.